that it's critical for us to be able to communicate out metrics in, in a number of ways, not only to get projects and programs forward. So I'm going to start off with the easy one, ROI. Return on investment. One of the strategies that you have you know, when presenting metrics is always going to be this, this kind of segment of, hey, it's all about money. I mean, if you're talking with any kind of senior leadership team, they're going to connect, connect first with the bottom line dollars. I from when we got there, we were spending about $3 million a year in contract nurse anesthetics that we found was that for about $50,000 sign on bonus, which was the cost of the master's program that these people just went through, I could get people to sign a three year commitment that they would stay with the organization. $1,000, I could do RD. We were paying $3 billion a year for contract work. It's an easy equation, right? Well, why the hell have we been doing this? It went from an ROI. We put back roughly $2.7 million to the bottom line of the organization. And that was, boom, right there. I mean, that easy to do. One is more of a language issue. And it's, I say compliance versus adoption. In HR, we're really good at the compliance language side. We get compliance. We know how to line people up and get them through the line and put them through open enrollment and get everybody's forms in. The problem we have is there's certain things that the compliance language doesn't play well. And one of those is when we see your leadership team. If you can tell a story, and you can engage an audience, sometimes it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's a little bit longer, but I think it's something that is really important. Storytelling works in so many ways in our organization to get things across. And I think um, it's, it's, not, it's not a skill that everybody has, but it's a skill that can be developed. And, you know, in, in, in HR, we fight a lot of that. And at the end of the day, you know, our goal is to try to win the, rule, the war and try to make, you know, our ultimately these projects go forward and ultimately make our organizations better, our people better. Mm -hmm. Try to win a battle and it costs us winning the war. And we get so tied up into it. It's like, oh, we have to have this. We can't move forward without it. And if you don't want to have to, you know, then that, that's going to, that, you know, then I, I don't even know what we're going to do. I right? hiring managers that fight so hard to hire one person. But I knew, because I'd already talked to them, that they had really five people they needed to hire. But they fought so hard for one, and the CEO fought so hard back. And then they finally relent and say, look, I'm tired of talking about this for 30 minutes. Fine, go ahead and hire that person. And then, okay, now I'll talk about this one. They're like, no, 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 you wasted your 30 minutes. So sometimes, as HR people, we have to go in and be willing to walk out of a room and say, you know what, I didn't get it, but it's okay. You know, save face. I'll come back with some better methods. I'll come back with another story. I'll come back with another lady to present the case of what, why we need this so bad for our organization. 